Welcome class to our second and last section for our weather and erosion book. We kind of had to cram weather and erosion together because we gave that week for you guys to get caught up with math and literacy. But the other next two books, Air and Water and Inside Earth, will have three weeks to cover the full book and that will kind of spread it out. So if you need to pause this video and take a break and come back to it later, that's totally fine. You just got to get this done um, this week, and that's why I'm posting it today on Tuesday, and might even be up yesterday on Monday for those that want to get ahead to give you time to be able to um, stay on track throughout you know this quarter and this week. So um, let's jump in, and like we should do with every lesson, let's recap what we've learned so far to get our minds ready to build upon what we've learned. And what did we cover in the first section? of a weathering and erosion. We covered two main topics. What do you think? Well, if you're struggling, maybe think about the title of this book. That's right, we covered weathering and erosion. So we learned that weathering through heat, cold, so temperature, uh, wind, water can impact um, you know, the rocks and the land around us, and it breaks it down into sediment. And then erosion is the process of carrying that sediment to another location through, you know, wind or water, right? So this chapter is what causes weathering and erosion. So we learned what weathering and erosion are, but now let's learn a little bit more about what causes it. So let's make a connection. The stones on this beach are now rounded and smooth, but they did not always look like this. How do you suppose the stones got this shape and texture? What do you think, the, what, what do you think caused these little stones and rocks to be smooth? They didn't get like that. If they didn't start like that, what caused it to be like that? think erosion caused this or do you think weathering caused this well if you said weathering you're right it's weathering that caused this it could be from the water we can see that there's water and waves kind of behind where it says uh what causes weathering erosion the water coming in and out over time caused these rocks to get smooth and rounded and that is our first section is water so let's read it and have you follow along with me. You can either read aloud if you want to practice reading, which is good. You can read in your mind and follow along with me, or you can just listen. So water is our first section. So most of weathering, erosion, and deposition, I bring the carrying of sediment and depositing it into a new place is called deposit, or it means deposition, on earth is caused by water in some form. Even the force of raindrops striking the ground can erode sediment. So running water. Water flowing downhill is described as running water. Examples of running water include rivers, streams, and runoff, which is rain or melted snow that is not absorbed by the ground. Runoff travels downhill along the surface of the land into small streams, which flow into rivers. At a river's mouth or end, it flows into a larger body of water, such as a lake or an ocean. And let's pause and look at these cool pictures of water down here in the very valley. These huge mountains, these plateaus even. And then right here through maybe like a forest or some woods, there's water. So as running water flows, it weathers rocks and erodes sediment from the land over which it travels. Rivers, streams, and runoff reshape the land by picking up sediments such as pebbles, sand, and silt, and transporting them to new location. A river's rushing water can also erode loose sediment from the river's banks. Over time, rivers can carve out valleys and canyons. We can look at this picture again, and the water could have been higher, and over time, just kept eroding at these mountains and causing it to get this shape.
So whenever running water slows down, it deposits the sediment it is carrying, for example. The water in a river slows down when it enters an ocean or a lake. At the river's mouth, oh, sorry, at the river's mouth. Over time, a, a deposit of sediment can build up there, creating a land called a delta. And let's pause and look at this right here. This picture shows us what a delta is. So we have this river carrying sediment and then depositing it at the mouth of this ocean. And now it's been built up. Now this is called a delta. Rivers also deposit sediment when they overflow their banks and cause a flood. A flood is a large amount of water covering normally dry land. So here's a picture of this really crazy flood going. And this flood is definitely carrying a lot of sediment, small pieces and big pieces. Um, so the flooding of a river usually has a natural repeating pattern. For example, some rivers may flood each spring. Floodwaters often deposit a large amount of very fine sediment on the river's floodplain. This makes the land more fertile or good for growing crops because the sediment is rich in minerals that plants need. So let's pause really quick. Why do you think that rivers may flood each spring? Well, what season comes before spring? Maybe what season are we about to enter soon? Winter. And what happens during winter? I'm not, this is my first winter here in Gallup, so I'm not really for sure, but in Virginia and Utah, there was a lot of snowing and rain in the winter. And then that snow builds up and then it melts during the spring that melting of the snow goes into rivers and that raises the river's uh, water level, which can cause a flood. All right, so continue to read this last paragraph on page 15. Over time, the path of a river can be transformed from straight to curving due to changes in the speed of the flowing water. These changes cause the river to erode sediment from its banks and some areas and deposit sediment in others. As a result, large looping bends called meanders develop giving the river an S shape. And then right here are these meanders or bends, this S shaped river. That's pretty cool looking. Okay, let's learn about another form of water that can cause erosion. Waves. The area where the land meets the water of a lake or an ocean is called the shoreline. So let's pause and look at these shorelines, these pictures. So this very bottom one, here's the shoreline here on top. It's really long shoreline on this long island. So at a shoreline, repeated wave action can destroy land in some locations and build up new land in other locations. Steep walls called cliffs can form where crashing waves weather and erode a shoreline. So like right here, Shoreline's crashing, reshaping this land. As the waves wash over the shore, the rocks grind against one another, causing pieces of rock to break off and eventually become smooth and rounded. Waves also transport sand and larger pieces of weathered rock away from some areas of the shoreline. Often, sediment that is eroded from an area of the shoreline is deposited in another. A beach is a deposit of sediment along a shoreline. Some beaches are composed mostly of smaller sediment, such as sand, while other beaches consist of large pebbles and larger rocks. Ocean waves also sometimes deposit sediment. Sorry, excuse me. A short distance uh, offshore, forming ridges called sandbars. And any of those, any of you guys that have been in an ocean and have swam out a little bit and found a sandbar, it's kind of a cool kind of crazy experience. Over time, a sandbar can become larger as more and more sediment is deposited there. This can create a landform called a barrier island. So this right here, this water and waves bringing all the sediment in here, causing this to form. This used to be underwater, but now because so much water has been 
bringing in sediment and water has risen and lowered because of tides, this barrier island has been formed. Here's some cliffs. Okay, our next form of water that can cause erosion, ice. Just as water in its liquid form can destroy some landforms and build up others, frozen water can also shape the land, so ice. For example, water inside small cracks and rocks can freeze and melt repeatedly, causing weathering over time. When the water in the cracks freezes, it expands and takes up more space as a result. The cracks widen and the, and the rocks eventually split. Okay, so I'm going to pause really quick. You guys continue to read this page. Okay, page 17. Now I'm gonna go grab something really quick, okay? Hello, hello, sorry, I thought I unmuted this. Okay, so I wanted to show this to you. I was talking about, I asked you what you read, but I was muted, so you didn't hear me. You learned about ice and glaciers, which are basically moving ice features, these massive ice sheets that can impact uh, the land around us. And so I wanted to kind of show you what water does in its frozen state. So I filled this mason jar up with water to get it cold one day, but then I forgot that it was in there. And one night I heard this kind of loud pop while I was sleeping and it woke me up. I was like, what is that? But then I didn't hear anything else, so I didn't think anything else was going on. And then the next day I went in and you can see that this ice, this water expanded and cracked this glass. And that is what water can do in its frozen state when it is ice. It can expand and crack rocks and all the land that's around it, okay? So again, I'm going to go put this away and I want you to read this page 18 and then we'll talk about wind, okay? So please start reading and I'll be back. Okay, what did you learn about wind? Anything stick out to you? So 
we learn that wind is similar to water in the sense that it can carry sediment, uh, smaller pieces normally uh, than the larger pieces that water can carry, and it can carry and deposit it and cause deposition to create things like sand dunes. So, uh, remember to do your checkpoint. I wanted to point this out. So, each section we have these checkpoints where there are discussion points. Sorry. Each section we have in science will have these checkpoints, which are discussion posts on Canvas. And you can, and these are these are where they're found right here, describe the process by which a sand dune forms. So on Canvas, you can find that assignment and answer that question. And let me scroll up. And then here is the water checkpoint. The water checkpoint is water can both destroy landforms and build up landforms, provide an example of each. So we just talked about both water and wind, and make sure you answer the checkpoints. And if you're struggling, you can come back to your book. You should all have a copy of it and reread re it to help you out. So let's get into our next force that can create erosion. Gravity. Gravity, the force that causes objects to fall to earth, is behind many of the forms of erosion and deposition you have read about. For example, rivers and glaciers flow downhill because of gravity. When moving water or wind slows, it is gravity that causes the sediment being carried to be deposited. Gravity also causes pieces of weathered rock to fall from cliffs and chunks of land to slide downhill. The movement of land by gravity is known as mass movement. Scientists classify mass movements according to the materials that move and the speed of the movement. If large pieces of weathered rock suddenly break away and fall from a cliff or a steep slope, the, ras sorry, the mass movement is called a rock fall. Got rock and mass mixed together. The mass movement is called a rock fall. If a whole chunk of land separates from more stable land under it and suddenly slides downhill, the mass movement is called a landslide. Landslides often begin because of heavy rainfall melting snow, earthquakes, or volcanic eruptions. They suddenly reshape hills and cause other dramatic changes in Earth's features. Sometimes the soil and rock on a slope or hillside travel extremely slow but steady downhill. This type of gradual mass movement is called creep. So here's a creep, this picture, and then what is this? This is a rock fall. All right, here's your next gravity checkpoint. Make sure you do that. And then apply science. Let me double check. I don't, I can't remember if this is the apply science for this section or if it's after um, the next couple pages. So one second. Let me double check really quick. So, no, so not this. You don't have to worry about this apply assignment. Sorry, you don't have to worry about the supply science concept. But in a few pages, you'll have the apply science, which is your other assignment for this book, Weathering and Erosion. Okay, so our last section for today, and this should just be a few minutes, so stay focused with me. If you need to take a break or get up and stretch, you can do that. Come back to this video. I want you to be laser focused in and be paying attention. Okay, so make a connection. Cutting down trees provides people with wood for lumber and other products. In some areas, all trees are cut down. What benefits might be gained from planting new trees? So we're gonna learn how people change, and then let's think about, maybe you already know, the benefit of planting new trees. And then just to pause from reading really quick, this picture looks like a place where I went and worked one time. I went and worked uh, with my buddies, my dad, his dad had a helicopter business and they did uh, logging where people would cut down trees and I would be on the ground, be one of the ground crew members and the helicopter would uh, go over to one area and pick up the logs and then bring it over to another area and drop the logs and me and my buddies would have to go run down and grab the lines or they're called chokers. We have to go grab the chokers really quick because the helicopter was making 
it's rounds like really quick and so it was a we had to run down hills like this and then run back up it was pretty chaotic all right so let's get focused that's my fault i distracted us a little bit but just sharing a little experience about uh people cutting down trees so it's it's in line right Okay, so people and land. Weathering, erosion, and deposition are natural processes that changes Earth's landforms. Human activities can also change the land in dramatic ways, sometimes speeding up or slowing down natural processes that are occurring. For example, people have constructed large dams across some rivers. Dams can help control flooding farther downstream. Generators inside hydroelectric dams produce electricity using the energy of moving water. Although a dam provides benefits, it changes the natural flow of water in an area, which affects the amount of sediment transported by the river. People sometimes remove grass, shrubs, and trees from the land during the construction of buildings, roads, or parking lots. However, plant roots help hold soil in place, protecting it from erosion by run or wind off. So removing plants from the land can lead to increased erosion in that area. If the roots hold the land together and you remove that plant, well, now the land is very susceptible to, you know, movement and can form a, a landslide, for example, of what we read in the last section. In some areas, people have tried to control beach erosions by building up jetties. A jetty usually consists of a wall of large rocks that puts out into the ocean, that, sorry, that juts out into the ocean. Here's a picture of a jetty right here. This helps maintain a large, this helps maintain or enlarge some parts of a beach. However, a jetty blocks sand from being deposited on other parts of the beach. This can worsen the effects of erosion in those areas. Here's a windbreak. A windbreak is such as a row of trees that we're gonna learn about that protects soil from erosion. And then here's some coastal wetlands help protect inland areas from erosion. Soil, sorry, continue to read. This is our last, this is our last page, guys. So we have one, two more paragraphs, okay? And then here's your apply science concept and your last checkpoint. <clears throat> Soil can be easily eroded from large areas of open farmland. So people have developed practices to help reduce erosion and conserve or protect soil. One of these practices is to leave the stalks of plants in the field after crops are harvested. So the roots of the plants can help protect the soil from erosion. Another conservation practice is to create a windbreak, which we pointed out at the beginning right here, such as a row of trees in a high wind area. A windbreak can reduce the speed of the wind and can change its direction, preventing the wind from blowing away the soil. These trees are protecting from all the soil being blown away. Low marshy areas where the soil is covered with water are called wetlands. Wetlands along the coast help protect areas farther inland from erosion caused by ocean waves. Wetlands along a river protect dry land on the flood floodplain from flood damage by absorbing and slowing flood waters. In the past, people have often filled in or drained wetlands to create dry land for development. Now many state and local governments are working to protect wetlands and restore them to their natural condition. So here's your checkpoint, and it is to describe one human activity that can speed up erosion and one activity that can slow down erosion. Okay, and then here's your apply science concept. So how have humans changed the land near where we live? Write about one of these changes in the text entry box for this assignment and explain how it might affect weathering or erosion in our area. All right, class, that is weathering and erosion. We just finished the book. Make sure you do all the checkpoints and all the apply sciences. Those will help you get prepared for the unit assessment and try to get that done this week, okay? I want you to stay on track, and that's why I put the calendar out on Canvas each week so you know what we're covering and then you can stay on track. And if you're behind, which hope, I know some of you are, which is okay, it'll just get you caught up. You can go back to the previous week and click on those assignments and get caught up. All right. You guys are doing great. Keep it up. Hope you enjoy learning about weathering erosion. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.